so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville many years ago in a city in south africa there lived a lady called maria mabasu on this fateful day maria was in company of her cousin and they were headed to see her sister somewhere in the city upon arrival at the bus station they realized that they had missed the bus and so they decided to hitch a ride they flagged down the vehicle and asked for a lift their request was granted shortly after they had proceeded on the ride the driver pulled over alighted and then proceeded to assault the boat of them maria was brutally raped and then flung off to the side of the road left for dead we come with my cousin we was going to my sister we go back and the bus leaves us. And then when we go back, we can't go back. The bus is gone. We ask for the lift. When we get the lift. When we are near to the, to the road to, to go home, that man, that man gripped me here and he nearly killed me. And he raped me and then pushed me down with the, with the car. But lucky, I never died. Fortunately, she didn't die. She survived the brutal attack. She worried about how she was ever going to survive the trauma of being so brutally raped. Little did she know that there was a lot more coming to worry about. Maria was a young naive girl with little or no education. She was oblivious of the care that she was supposed to receive as a rape survivor or victim. And it wasn't long before she discovered that she was pregnant. She was pregnant with her rapist child. Maria carried the pregnancy with mixed emotions and bore her child, a boy, at the Chris Honey Hospital on the 13th of June, 1986. That child was named Tabo Besta. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I will be bringing to you the full and detailed story, an elaborate documentary of Tabo Besta, also known as the Facebook Rapist, a dangerous rapist, murderer, and felon who planned and successfully executed his prison break from a maximum correctional facility in South Africa. Today's story is that of Africa's most notorious criminal, Tabo Besta. After Tabo was born, he stayed with his mother until he was about one year of age. After which she decided to put her life together, get a job, get useful and you know just to move on with her life. So she decided to take Tabo to live with her mother, his grandmother, so she could help her to raise her son. She would periodically visit her mother to see her son until this fateful day. Tabo's mother narrated that on this particular day, she had gone to see her son and then an argument ensued between her and her mother, causing her mother to push her out of the house. After that incident, she decided that she would never step a foot into that house again. And so she put a complete halt to the periodic visits and stopped seeing her child. Guys, that day will be the last day that she would ever set her eyes upon her son. I'm going to visit, I'm coming back. And the end of the day, my mother, she shouts me every day, Wabo. She pulls me away, Wabo. When she pulls me away and then I say no, I sit by my place. I'm not going anywhere there again. In 2002, Tabo Besta's grandmother had a stroke and passed. With a rapist father that he never knew, a mother who abandoned him, and a grandmother who was now dead, Tabo felt no reason to remain where he was. He ran away from home. Although Tabo Besta had always exhibited high levels of truancy and recalcitrance, his official sojourn into the life of crime began when he was only 17 years old. The child criminal had defrauded a hit TV show called Yo TV and had spent several years in juvenile detention. His second experience doing time was also fraud related. In 2009, 
He was charged and convicted for carrying out fraudulent activities. He was sentenced to six months imprisonment or an option of a 500 rand fine. He didn't have the money, so he did time. When Tabo got out, he continued in his usual pattern of fraud. But this time, more intense, more advanced, more calculated, and more brazenly. At the time, Tabo convinced two unsuspecting airline companies to give him free flights worth more than 500,000 rands. In 2010, he chartered a Beechcraft 1900 from the National Airways Corporation to fly him and 16 other people to Cape Town for four nights. He produced the 275 thousand rand payment receipts which was eventually found to have been fabricated and when the account manager still could not find the payments in the company's account by the next day the airline company had to cancel the return arrangement similarly in july of 2011 he leased a private jet from fortune air the aircraft flew four models from cape town made a stop at durban picked Tabo Besta up with another woman and then headed to a final destination. But just like the first one, he produced a fake transfer receipt to facilitate that arrangement. The return trip was again cancelled when the scam was uncovered. When interviewed, the manager described Tabo as a sweet talker, one who was highly skilled in the business of fraud. Guys, it was clear that Tabo Besta's fraud was not born out of a need for survival. It was born out of greed, lust, and a compulsion to live a luxurious life far above his means. It was clear that his addiction to fraud was getting deeper, progressive, more refined with every passing strike. Tabo's test for crime became a lot more vicious around 2020 and 2021. He pulled off a string of atrocities that earned him the name the Facebook Rapist. Posing as an agent for international modeling agencies, Tabo will scout for unsuspecting young women on Facebook, enticing them with job offers and modeling opportunities. He will lure them over and then he would rob and rape them. Pesta had put up an advertisement in a magazine's website, seeking the services of a presenter and a model. His first victim had applied for the job and had been lured over to come see the recruiter, the agent. She got to him and he had informed her that she was scheduled for the photo shoot at the ban, which of course was a lie. And so they took a drive in her car to the ban and at some point they had to check into a hotel maybe it was getting late the reason was not given while she was in the shower taking the bath besta dashed out and went to purchase a knife and a duct tape and when he arrived he pounced on her and tried forcing himself on her unwilling to yield the victim struggled with him and got stabbed in the process eventually she was overpowered. He raped her brutally and made away with her personal belongings. Thoroughly motivated by the success of the first, his second strike was only a few days after. His second victim was introduced to him by his then girlfriend. After the trio had hung out, he booked the flight for his girlfriend to return to Johannesburg. And then he stayed back and began flirting and wooing his girlfriend's friend. They hung out that night and had sexual intercourse. And the next morning, despite there was a huge possibility that he could still have gotten it without first, he tied up the lady, raped her, and then fled with her cell phone, wristwatch, cash, credit cards, and other valuables. Guys, nobody ever progresses backwards when they take to crime. And Tabu Besta was not any different. He had engaged in all manners of fraud and then progressed to robbing and raping. His next stop was murder. Tabo's murder victim was none other but his girlfriend, Nomfundo Tihuli. The young, beautiful model 
had been described by Tabo himself as the only person who stood by him during his ordeal with the law, especially when everyone else had deserted him. It was a long distance relationship and at some time they had met up for a holiday. Sometime along the way, they had disagreed on something and had gotten into an argument, which seems like a normal course of every relationship. But Tabo Besta is not your regular normal guy. He got a knife and stabbed her in the chest and then fled. But before fleeing, he didn't forget to leave with her cell phone, her laptop and other valuables. He even tried without success to log into her mobile banking applications to steal her money as she laid lifeless in the room with him. And when he couldn't succeed, he left her there in a pool of her own blood and then he fled. Now these are cases that came to light, cases that were reported, cases that were uncovered. It is unclear if there are other rape incidences or murders that were not uncovered. But what had become clear, crystal clear, was that Tabo Besta had become a very dangerous and ruthless criminal. But luck, however, ran out on him, and he was arrested and charged for rape and murder in two different trials in 2011 and 12. He pleaded guilty in some sort of plea bargain to the both crimes. During his plea of a locutus, he pleaded with the judge, with the courts, to tamper justice with mercy, stating that his rough childhood and all the unfortunate situations and experiences he has been made to undergo by life had inadvertently led him to crime as his only way of survival. He revealed that during the period when he was still living with his grandparents, that he was raped by one of his grandparents' friends. He also said his grandparents were alcoholics who instilled no morals or proper upbringing in him. He also added that when he left home as a teenager and was squatting in the trenches, he got approached by a man who promised to take care of him, but rather the man took him in and raped him. He even went further to state that even when he went to jail as a young adult, he was also raped in prison. After hearing his plea, the judge handed him a 50-year jail time for the two incidences of rape, but that was later reduced to a 30-year jail term. And during the murder trial the very next year, he was handed the life sentence. His mother collapsed and had a stroke when she heard of her son's conviction. Tabo Besta was to spend the rest of his life in prison, never to be seen or heard from. He had no intentions of doing that. Exactly 10 years after Tabo Besta's incarceration, it was reported that he had committed suicide by self-immolation, like he lit himself on fire right in his prison cell and burned to death. And one year after, the Department of Correctional Facilities officially reported that Tabo Besta had died after there was a fire outbreak in his cell. So for many, it was good radiance to bad rubbish. It was the end of a terrible rapist and a murderer. But was it? Only shortly after his supposed death, a man who had the most striking resemblance with Tabo Besta was photographed shopping at Woolworths in Santon City with multiple award-winning celebrity doctor, Dr. Nandifa Magudumana. Dr. Nandifa is a doctor, a surgeon, and a successful entrepreneur. She is a skincare and aesthetics specialist, expert, the owner of Optimum Medical Aesthetics Solutions, 360 Beauty Center, which specializes in facelifts, Botox, chemical peel, hairline restoration, and everything beauty enhancement and cosmetic surgery. The 35-year-old beauty is a freak for wellness, fitness, health, and fashion. She is described as a celebrity doctor, given the kinds and calibers of clients that she entertains, including former Miss Universe. She is, or can we say was now, 
married to a very decent, good-looking, responsible man, a doctor as well, called Dr. Mukuseli Magudumana, a medical practitioner who specializes in pediatric medicine and runs his own practice. They got married in a very glitzy and glamorous wedding ceremony in 2013. Their marriage was blessed with two kids, two beautiful, adorable daughters. Details of the kind of marriage these two had is quite sketchy and all sorts of assumptions are being expressed, understandably so, because it beats people's imagination. People are dead curious to know why a successful, educated, highly accomplished married woman with kids like Dr. Nandifa will cheat on her husband with a vile, dangerous, criminal, rapist, murderer and convicted felon like Tabo Besta. Report has it that Tabo Besta and Dr. Nandifa met years before his life incarceration. Far back when she was sort of into modeling and he was into fashion events. They rekindled their affiliation sometime when Tabo was serving life imprisonment for rape and murder. Prison record has it that Dr. Nandifa began visiting Tabo in maximum prison around 2017 to 18. Despite being married with kids. Can we just pause, take a second, and imagine cheating on your husband with a convict? So yes, they began dating. And before long, they connived to break Tabo out of prison. They had a great waterproof plan. You see, planning to escape from a state maximum penitentiary is no child's play. Aside from the risk involved, it is super expensive as it will involve very high profile bribing and compromising, giving offers which are mouth watering enough to compel a prison officer to put his job, his career, his freedom at risk. Tabo needed plenty of resources and what better way to muster them if not going back to his first love, fraud. Right there in prison, Tabo defrauded multiple women. He was no ordinary prisoner. He was VIP and he had access to so many resources. Computers, mobile phones, internet, designer clothes and a lot more to enable him carry out his fraudulent activities. He even attended Zoom meetings with corporate backgrounds right there in prison. Now that was not even the best of it. Tabo was even accorded unbelievable privileges of going in and out of the prison for pizza, holidays and hotel meetup with Dr. Nandifa who would sneak away from her husband to enjoy exotic moments with the convict. An invoice had made it out showing a four-day booking for Dr. Nandifa and Tabo at the Bloom Fountain accommodation which is a 30 minutes drive from the prison where Tabo was incarcerated. While in prison, Tabo also ran a glamorous media company called 21st Century Media, made to look like a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox. And from prison, he organized a world standard luxury lunch held at the Hilton Hotel and attended by the creme de la creme, celebrities, the high society of South Africa. Tabo, the chairman of the company, who was based in New York, called in on Zoom from America, and he was projected on the big screen to the loud applause and excitement of the invited guests. Little did they know that he was calling in from a prison there in South Africa. Tabo and Dr. Nandifa's plan was to feign Tabo's death by suicide and then replace him with a dead body procured by Dr. Nandifa which will be smuggled into his prison cell by prison wardens who were working closely and in collaboration with Tabo. These wardens will then smuggle Tabo out of the prison facilities. Guys, Dr. Nandifa was charged with the responsibility of procuring and supplying the body. One crucial element for Tabo Besta's escape plan 
was for him to be moved to solitary confinement, a place where prisoners are held when they are deemed to be a threat or when their lives are being threatened or maybe for some sort of punishment for misbehaving. But unfortunately for them, despite repeatedly trying to get sent to solitary confinement on grounds of threats to his life, his request was denied. This surely created a major setback to their well-crafted and thought-out plans. But they were not deterred. Dr. Nandifa carried out her own duty of procuring a body with sheer excellence. Only weeks before Besta escaped, she had gone to the Free State Mortuary, there in Bloom Fountain, where she obtained the first body, claiming it was her father. But only one week after that body was claimed, the body was found floating in a river with the personal identification tag still hanging on the toe of that body. It was dumped and abandoned. Connecting the dots now, it is believed that their attempt to use the first body as a decoy failed when Tabobesta could not be moved into solitary confinement. And since of course there was no way she was going to return the body to the mortuary, it was disposed in the river. In a similar fashion, Dr. Nandifa claims the second corpse, claiming that it was her brother. That too was not used as their plan to break Tabo out suffered another major setback. But on their third attempt, they were in big luck. The third body, which was eventually used as a decoy for Tabo Besta's escape, belongs to 32-year-old Catligo Mfolo. He was a social, amiable, and decent young man whom his family attested had never gotten into any kind of trouble. Catligo suddenly got missing in May of last year after leaving his house, hale, healthy, and hearty. And the next time his family will see him, he will be dead, burnt beyond recognition. Dr. Nandifa had claimed Catligo's corpse from the mortuary as her husband. He was burnt beyond recognition thus making identification near impossible. A few days before the D-Day, Catligo's desecrated body was smuggled into the prison, hidden in one of the kitchens for two days, waiting for the right time to strike. On the D-Day, Tabo Besta was smuggled out of his cell, given a prison warden's uniform to put on, and made his way out of the state penitentiary while Catligo's body was put in his cell and the cell was set ablaze. It wasn't long before news made it out that the notorious Tabo Besta had committed suicide. This was also confirmed and corroborated by the head of corrections. But in actual fact, Tabo Besta was in a rented, expensive, luxurious apartment with his lover, Dr. Nandifa Magudumana. Who knows? Perhaps engaged in heated marathon sexual intercourse to celebrate his big escape. It is important to note that the autopsy conducted on Catligo reveals that he did not die from natural causes, but he had passed from blunt force trauma to the head, suggesting very highly that he was murdered. So the escape was a big success, but the prison escape is only the beginning. There is a lot more to worry about when a prison escape happens. Covering the tracks, tying up all loose ends, and showing it stays seal proof is also an integral part of the whole package. Hence, days after Tabo Besta was born and deposited on the morgue, Dr. Nandifa once again went to the mortuary to lay claims to the charred remains of Tabo Besta. It is important to note that Dr. Magudumana's father was in on the whole thing alongside his daughter in her corpse claiming expedition. Well, if you were thinking that now that Bonnie and Clyde were free, they will retire from their life of crime, perhaps disappear to a lonely island in the east of Africa and live out their lives there. No, their lost, greed and insatiable thirst for crime knew no bounds. Dr. Nandifa and Tabo Besta, who now went by the name 
TK Nguana had floated a sham construction company. They called it Aram Properties. They lifted luxurious homes and buildings from Google and other websites and floated it on their own website, posing as real estate developers and scamming millions of rands from unsuspecting investors. Having brought all of these facts to you, I'm sure you are itching to know one thing. How was Tabo and Dr. Magudumana's ploy eventually exposed? How were they caught? Three things happened. First, when Tabo Besta's mom heard that her son had committed suicide and had died in prison, she made moves to claim the child remains and give her son a burial. When Dr. Nandifa got wind of the fact that Tabo's mother was coming for the corpse, she visited her claiming to be Tabo's wife and telling Tabo's mother that she wanted Tabo to be cremated, a decision that Tabo's mother vehemently kicked against. Secondly, when Cat Ligo went missing, Cat Ligo, the man who was born and put in place in Tabo's cell, his family had opened the missing person's file at the police station and in the course of investigations, his parents' DNA was taken and matched with the child remains that were found in Tabo's cell, obviously revealing that that was not Tabo. And finally, few months after Tabo's escape, Tabo was photographed shopping at a supermarket with his lover, Dr. Nandifa, or Dr. Nandipa. <laughs> Nandifa Nandipa, let me know in the comment section, along with Nandipa's child. When they realized that the lead has been blown and their crime had been uncovered, they quickly fled their 12 million rand rented mansion. Dr. Magudumana, on the other hand, abandoned her two daughters in school and fled with Tabo out of the country. They passed through one or two countries before arriving in Tanzania, where they were nabbed, only 10 kilometers away from Kenya. They were arrested and extradited back to South Africa to face charges. In Tabo's possession at the point of his arrest was a US passport with the name Tom Kelly. Dr. Nandipa's dad, as well as a suspended prison warden, have now been charged with murder, arson, and aiding and abetting Tabo Bester's escape. Dr. Nandifa is charged with the offense of murder, fraud, and violating bodies. Tabo Bester, lastly, will now face added charges of fraud, defeating the ends of justice, escaping from incarceration, and violating a body. He has been placed under 24-7 surveillance at the C-Max section at the Correctional Center in Pretoria. From there, he will cool his feet and attend his trial. It is clear as crystal that he will never, ever see the light of day again. The story of Tabo Besta is a perfect example of how foundation can either build or destroy a person. It is the story of parental neglect and its far-reaching consequences. It is the story of a compulsive obsession for crime. It is the story of the most tasteless decision that the woman can make in the name of what she thinks is love. It is a story of a flawed system where even the most dangerous criminals can still make it out. It is a story of crime and its consequences. It is the story of Tabo Besta, who will go down as one of Africa's most dangerous, most manipulative and quick-witted criminals in the history of the continent. I do hope that you enjoyed the story as I told it. So thank you guys for watching and coming to this point with me. If you get to subscribe, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on your bell notifications, give this video a big thumbs up, drop all your comments and feelings down below and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. It's me, your girl Barista Neze, and this is Nezevale. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye.